everyone, welcome back to Isha Gaming. Today we're going to play a game. And this is a thing that I also want to hear your opinion on. Now, you saw the thumbnail and title. We are going to pretend that we only get to play one game per system for the rest of our lives. And boy, I gave this a lot of thought because you have to be pretty sure that you're not going to get tired of the game quickly. You have to make sure that the game is full of content so that it lasts you for a very long time because we're talking for the rest of your life. So this is just an imaginary thing but it actually gives you a perspective of what kind of gamer you are and what you are looking for if this was like the thing that you have to do. Choose one game per system. Today we are actually tackling Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, all the Game Boys. <laughs> and then the DS, 3DS and Switch. Okay, so let's start off with, for the Game Boy, the original Game Boy, where do I have it? I have all my Game Boys in this neat little system. Now, this is the closest thing I come to an original Game Boy. It's a Game Boy Pocket does not have color or light in the screen. But it is pink and it's cute. So for this system, one game for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pokemon Yellow. Surprisingly enough, it still holds up today if you can look past the graphical limitations of the time. The gameplay and the premise is still to this day appealing and addicting to me. And it's not even many years ago that I played this last from start to finish. In my opinion, Pokemon Yellow has the possibility to last you for hundreds of hours of playtime. If you happen to want to collect all the 150 Pokemons. And all the Pokemons with their evolutionary stages and all the requirements that you have to put in to get all the Pokemon, basically. In a way, actually, and this is a huge open world, pre-open world era genre. And that is in your pocket, even which may actually have been ahead of its time for being released all the way back in 1998. Pokemon Yellow is my for the rest of my life game for the Game Boy. Now for the Game Boy Color. I don't have a Game Boy Color. Sorry. I played all my Game Boy Color games on this one when I was a little girl. <laughs> but almost the same thing can actually be said, like I said, for Pokemon Yellow, that is, can be said for Pokemon Silver. I love this game, it is so good. Look, I even have a sticker on it. Dino Dial. Total Dial, totally. So what you're looking at right now is my childhood. This was Irene, 10 years old. This was my life. Okay, so it is pretty much all I said about Pokemon Yellow, but this time the world is bigger and better and with colors. It is actually twice as big, in fact, because you also have not only the new region, Johto, but you have the old region, Kanto. Pokemon Silver was my first ever handheld game, which I ended up taking in about three to four hundred hours into this game, but spread across about three separate play sessions, play save files. Started over, in other words. And in my last save file, I came pretty close to completing the Pokedex, but then my internal battery died, <laughs> so to speak. In the cartridge, I mean. And I was catching Pokemons, breeding them, evolving them, all the way up to... I think I reached 220 or 30 in the Pokedex of 250. I have now, however, changed the battery inside. But I don't trust this system anymore, because these games, this game at least, used internal batteries to save, because they had actually time and date in them. But I have found a much better and safer way to play Pokemon Silver, now in my modern day. That is on the 3DS, because it was actually also sold on the 3DS eShop Nintendo Store. And I don't think you can lose your save file that way. That would suck. As this is a list of only one game per system to play for the rest of my life, I thought the smart choices to make would be to focus on games that could possibly last forever, or at least for a very long time. And such a game for the GBA, in my opinion, would be Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town. I actually have the box for that. There we go. You can play this for a ton of life hours. 
as it is a farming life simulator and a very good one at that, it can literally go on forever as you are a farmer whose only goals are to do whatever you want to do and make enough money to upgrade your house several times, max out the hearts on all of your livestock or just get married. You can also try to find all the fish in the game and buy the end game cabins in the game, they are expensive. One cabin you can buy in town and one on a hilltop, which you only unlock after 50 years of marriage in the game. That is insane. No one reaches that sort of marriage time. Of course, all of these choices are hard to make, but to play it safe in this pretend scenario, I choose to go with forever games. Games with no real ending to them, like Harvest Moon. Now for DS, my original first DS, DS Lite, love it, <laughs> but it's so old. I play on my DSi, or if I ever play DS, that is. For the DS I am choosing, of course, Animal Crossing Wild World, which is literally a forever game. It could last me for the rest of my life. I would be happy, I guess. It is also by far my most played game on the DS. It was also my first Animal Crossing game ever. I was absolutely hooked and it was original and unique for the time. And this very special genre still holds up. And truthfully, this title in the series is surprisingly similar to how the series is today found in the most recent New Horizons. This old title even had multiplayer. I kid you not. I was on MSN with people through forums and then on MSN and played online with people in this game. Servers are down now though, unfortunately. You can collect bugs, furniture, fish, get to know the neighbors and partake in events and festivals. All the goodies that you probably know from more modern Animal Crossing titles. That was my DS choice. Next up, the 3DS. Oh yeah, I gave my first 3DS to someone. Don't remember, gave it away. But this is the new 3DS. And the 3DS honestly has one of the strongest libraries ever. So this was a super tough one to choose one game for this system, I mean. There's just a ton of RPGs on the 3DS, so many good games. It's an RPG powerhouse and I was absolutely obsessed with it back in the day. I also made a video when I bought my first 3DS. You can check that out too, ancient video. But I'm going to go with a game that included all of the genres perfectly into one. Combining a bunch of genres. I would be happy with this game uh, if that was my only game. And I'm talking about Rune Factory 4. I don't have it in physical, so I cannot show you. But Rune Factory 4 is also re-released on the Switch, if you want to check this game out. But in my opinion, it was actually better on the 3DS than it is on the Switch, because it was made for the 3DS and it made more sense. And the graphics, and oh boy, the graphics. They just look better, in my opinion anyway, on the 3DS. <laughs> Lol. But anyways, Rune Factory 4 was actually at one time my favorite game in the world. It had it all. It had everything I loved from the gameplay of Harvest Moon games, but also it had a complex hack and slash combat. With a ton of weapons and magical spells to use, I loved the graphics, the music, the unrecycled dialogues in the game. They said something new every single day, so a ton of content actually packed into this game. I remember Exit actually said in a blog at the time that they had so much text to translate from Japanese to English. What do you call it? The localization team. I collected animals, I tried to ship everything so no item said unshipped on them, and I always had something to do and progress towards. Now this is a Nintendo handheld sort of list in this fake scenario that I'm creating. And I did write two other lists, so let's just say Skyrim is on one of the other consoles. So don't worry about that. So for all of this to make sense, the Switch game that I choose to live with for the rest of my life, actually, is one that I just feel extremely nostalgic for. And you could also actually call this cheating, but the Switch game that I actually choose is this one. 
Super Mario 3D All-Stars. We have Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario Galaxy. This is packing a ton of content into one and I needed my 3D platformer fix at some place in this list. I grew up with all of these games so they are naturally actually very special to me and my nostalgic feelings towards them because they are representing my childhood my childhood, pre-teens and teenage years. And they are actually so solid still, still holding up to this day. And by playing it safe on my Switch choice, I opened up a big section on the N64, the Wii and the GameCube, if I ever make that other video with the other lists, uh, to have all the choices on them. So in this hypothetical event of only being able to choose one game for each system for the rest of my life, I would play all of these games to death. Safe choices, I'm going safe. Now I am interested in what would you choose for the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, <laughs> DS, 3DS and Switch. We're talking six systems. Give me your solid picks. And needless to say, this was only for fun. And I hope you enjoyed my video today. And now I want you to hit like because that helps my algorithm out and it makes me happy. Follow my Twitter and I also have a Discord group where you can talk with me and all the people. That was all for today everyone. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Bye!